and hello everyone, welcome back to a new video. So today we'll be talking about doing mathematical stuff in Lua. Don't be scared, but we won't be going into difficult stuff that, you know, teachers used to go into. We're going to stay with the basics, so you don't have to worry too much. So we're going to be working with numbers. So first let's start off with converting a string to a number because you might want to do that at some point. So let's say we have a local, it's also I'm working in a Sublime text today. I didn't feel like starting up VS Code at the moment. And let's call this maybe like str or something. And let's make it 22. Print the type of str. Then if we were to lua this, as you can see it's a string. We want this to be a number so we can work with it. So what we can do is we can say to number and this will convert this string into a number do that as you can see it's a number take note that if you put a letter in there you might get a few errors such as just returning nil because it cannot so yeah that is how you convert a string to a number so now you know how to do it we can work with numbers a bit easier okay so let's just print out a few things first so let's start with basics 5 plus 5 that's how you add that will give you 10. You can add more, so 5 plus 5 plus 5, that will give you 20. Five, let's maybe go plus 1 this time, that will give you 16. Okay, that's plus, very simple. Let's say we have 20 minus 5 minus 7, and let's do that, we get 8. Let's do 1 plus 2, now we have 10. So we can add them together and we can subtract, doesn't really matter. If we wanted to, we could even go into the negative. So let's say you want to go minus 22. That will take us into the negatives. Lua has no problem working with negative numbers. We can times and stuff like that as well. So let's say you want to have 2 to the power of 2. That will give you 4. So you can use the caret symbol. And it's right above the 6 on a normal QWERTY US keyboard. Or let's say you want to go 2 to the power of 5. That will give you 32. Well, let's swap it around. Let's say 5 to the power of 2. That would be 25. That's very nice. If you want a times, it's also rather simple. 5 times 5. So you just use an asterisk. Do that, you get 25. 5 times 9, you get 45. And you can times it more, you know, times 2. That will also give you a number. So okay, if we go plus 5 here, then you're going to say. 95. But if we were to add brackets here, there's going to be 315. That is because it's going to work this out before it times this. Because it's going to times this, then that value they're going to times here. So it's going to work this out first. So that's kind of just the basics of math operations there. And we also have divide. So let's say 10 divided by 2. That should give us 5. Uh, 100 divided by 3.14 that will give us 31.84 division relatively simply you just use a forward slash we also have modulo so this is also considered the remainder operator in a sense so let's say we have 10 divided by 3 divided by 3 then you get 3.3333 so basically it's 9, but there's one remaining. So what we can do is we can say 10 modulo 3, or modulus, whichever you want to call it, and we get 1, because it is 3 times, so it, so it returns 3, but there's still one number left. There's still one value that it can take in. So then it gives you 1. So we were to make this 4, it would be 2, because 4 plus 4 is 8, you can't plus another 4 because that would be more than 10. So you get 2, so the remainder is 2. Take note, this is integer values, not floating point values, so it doesn't, it doesn't have that. It's not that part right there, it is a normal number. So yeah, take note about that. So it's not really the remainder, it's more just like the remaining number values, like the remaining full number that's being left out. So yeah, that's kind of the modulus, modulus, modulo, whichever you want to call it. So remember, the execution is the same in math, no matter where it is. So if we say 5 plus 10 times 2, 
So you might want to say you'll get 15 times 2 and that give you 30. But in fact, it will be 10 times 2 plus 5. So it will give you 25. That is because times takes priority. If you remember bottomus, then you know it's brackets, I think it's omitting, then division, and times, and yeah, all of that. So if we were to say maybe like plus 2 times 10 divided by 2, then we'll get 15. That is because it will work this out first. It will say so we'll go, this will be 5. And then it will times 2 with 5, which is 10, and then we'll get out of a 5. I actually find this a bit confusing because, you know, remembering all of this math operation, what takes priority, especially if it comes to this, these long equations, this is not really very long, but once it does, it really just gets confusing. So what I like to do is I like to do this. Now I know these two, they will be first. And if we do this, then what's going to happen is, these two are going to add to each other, but you're going to make 7. 7 times 10 is 70. 70 divided by 2, that's 32. I mean, 35. And there you go, 35. So these will take priority first, because they're the closest brackets. Then this one will take priority. If I were to remove this, then it will be these, and then these, and then all of them together. So then we get also get 35, actually, because 7 times 5 is 35, and... 7 times 10 divided by 2 is also 35. Okay, makes sense. But anyways, yeah. If we wanted to, we could also do something like this. And say, this should be first be 2 times 10. And then we'll get 15. So it will first do this right here. And then it will do this. And then it will do that. So brackets just allow you to say what should happen first. And it's really useful. You can use as many as, as of them as you want. And yeah. You can also put things in variables. So like, let's say x equal to 5 y is equal to 10 and you can also say like z is equal to x plus y so if we go here then we can say print out z and then we get 15. so yeah that's kind of the basics of math right there we also have a math library which can be incredibly useful so let's say we we can just use print now it doesn't matter we can say math.pi which will return pi so 3.14159. I really didn't remember the rest. I only remember these. But yeah, so there's pi if you ever need pi. And let's say we want to get a random number value. So let's say we go math or random. Alright. Let's print that out. We get 0 0.84 because it gives you a random value between 0 and 1. Do it again. But that's not very random. Every time we run it, we get the same value. That is because computers aren't really very random to begin with. So what we can do is we can go here to the top, and to make it more random, we can say math.randomc. And this will see If we say like 1, then it will be a little bit different, but it will stay the same. If we say 2, it will be a little bit different, but it will stay the same. So this will kind of seed it. So a way to get around the non-randomness is we can say os.time. os.time just basically returns the current time. So if I were to just print os.time here then first of all we get a random value and here it returns the current time from I think like 19 something like this is the amount of seconds then run again now we get another random value current time from 19 and whatnot so yeah very useful so with each iteration it will be a different value now because there's you know each second so every second will get a different value we will also specify that it should have some things in it, so if you get 10, it will be between the integers 1 and 10. So if we were to run that, we get 6, 5, 5, 5, 4, 8, 2. So yeah, we get a bunch of random values between a bunch of random things. And yeah, I guess, I think both 1 and 10 are included. It's just very difficult to get all of them. Anyways. So yeah, we can also specify between what. So let's say between 10 and 50, for example. That will give us a value between 10 and 50. If I can run Lua. And you can see there we get a random value between 10 and 50. I might be getting a lot of double values here, but that's only because I'm taking, I'm faster than a second, so, you know. 
But yeah, they run a value between 10 and 50. I think both of them are included. But I'm not quite sure of it. So yeah, that's getting random values. Now let's say we have some sort of list. Now one thing we do is we can just say print math dot min. So let's say we had some sort of list. If we say math of min, that will return the smallest value inside of that list, which is 1. So if we just clear everything, go like that. So we did 1. Same if we go math.max, that will return the largest value. In this case, it's 50. You might be thinking like, it's kind of useless, but once your application scales and you get a lot of random values that you might not know or have control of, this becomes really, really helpful. We can also use some extra cool math functions. So let's say math.floor. And let's go 3.14159. That's pi. It will turn 3. Basically, it rounds down. It will always round down. No matter what this number here is, that could be 9. It would still round down to 3. You also have seal. So this will go to the ceiling. The other one will go to the floor because ceiling is up, floor is down. Anyways, that will give you 4. Always go up. So we go 3.1. Always go up. No matter what this value is, it will always, always, always go up. Other math things such as math.sin and cos and whatnot. I don't actually know how to use these, but you know, there you go, like sin 20, that would be that. You can also go like, I think you can also do cos, cos 20, that would give 0 0.40, and then ton. Yeah, so this is some of the basic math things you can do. There's a lot more math things you can do. I just showed you how to do some of them. But yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and can out at least do some math in Lua. If you have any Lua projects that you want to tell me about, please leave them in the comment section below. I would love to see what you guys are doing with Lua because Lua is a really amazing programming language. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and I will see you all again in the next video. Goodbye.